Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and the Coordinator of Internal Quality Assurance Cell, Anjali Amal Mahalajam Engineering College, Koyal Bindi. I am happy to make a presentation to the faculty members on examination reforms. In November 2018, AACTE circulated the examination reform policy. Uh, my presentation is based on the content of the, uh, the AACT document published on examination reform policy. Uh, what we are going to discuss in this uh, lecture, uh, the output of based education versus outcome based education, we just uh, compare uh, the two types of education and uh, we will we'll focus on the program outcome, the classification of program outcomes the assessment strategy for outcome based education we define two new parameters competency and performance indicator and the course assessment plan and question paper structure the outcome of the presentation at the end of the session the participants will be able to interpret the program outcomes they prepare the course assessment plan and prepare the question paper with the performance indicators. Uh, we just uh, compare the, we find out the, the find, we discuss the attributes of the output based education. Output based education depends on the input. So the content to teach and the teaching methodology. We focus mostly on the content and it is teacher centric education. So teaching involves sharing, sharing of knowledge. The teacher or the faculty member is sharing the information to the student. That is what the output based education. Assessment is based on the marks and the grade. So what we measure at the end of the course, how many students passed with the distinction, how many students passed with the first class, uh, what are the grades obtained by the student at different subjects, that is what we are focusing. Learning assesses at the end of the course. We do all the assessment only at the end of the course, end of the unit. So we do like that. The students are passive in the system. When you have output based education earlier, some 10 years back, it is based on the students are passive listener to the teacher. It promotes only rote learning. So they mug up the information, whatever the information given to the student, they mug up and they will prepare and they will write in the examination and immediately they will forget. So it emphasizes what the teacher hopes to achieve. So in the output based education, all depends on the teacher. So he will be planning something for a particular course and he will implement and everything depends on the teacher. And uh, outcome based education. So it depends on what is it is based on the what student will achieve at the end of the course or at the end of the program. Teaching involves incorporating activities that require students to demonstrate their learning. So here in the outcome based education, the focus is on student learning. So how effectively the student learned the thing, that is what the focus and they have to demonstrate the responsibility of learning is with the student here. Assessment is based on the attainment of outcome. So we have program outcome, course outcome, so the assessment is based on the attainment of outcome. So involves continuous improvement through feedback. So feedback for every class, class session and feedback for every activity and feedback for every uh, examination is given to the students and based on that they will improve their learning. Students are active in the learning system. So it promotes the critical thinking, reflection and the action of the student. It is learner centric, learner center and learner takes the responsibility for their learning and uh, the outcome based education, it emphasizes on the outcomes of the program, outcomes of the course or outcome of the lecture. Uh, we just listen to the statement, we I hear and I forget, I see and remember, I do and I understand. So when the students are involved in the learning activity, when they are doing something, they can understand and they can remember for a longer time. And similarly, the our our man, the Trikural, Karka Kasadara Karpave Katrapit Nirka Adar Kutaka. So in English, let a man learn faultlessly whatever he may learn, 
then his contact be in keeping with his learning so when when we achieve these two in our classroom uh, then everything will be right and the students will be uh, on par with the expectation of the industry so there are five sense organs we are learning through our sense organs 1% through taste 1.5% through touch 3.5% through smell and 11% by hearing and 83% by sight so 83% we are looking at something and learning and similarly remember what is your remembering capacity so 20% we remember what we hear 30% we remember what we see 50% we remember what we see and hear 80% we remember what we say and 90% we remember what we say and do so we remember more information for a longer time when we say something and do something so this is the philosophy this is the main parameter for the active learning in the classroom or outcome based education so we have to involve the students we have to make the student to say something or do something on the subject so that they will remember 90% of the information for a longer time so that is what missing today today the students are missing they are not able to remember the information for a longer time long term memory is missing with the students to promote that we have to make the student in the teaching process and yesterday the metric how effectively the teacher was teaching in the classroom that was measured but today how effectively the student is learning in the class that is what the measurement that is what the metric and we have certain things to measure the attributes of effective learning or effective teaching yesterday it was effective teaching by the student but today it was it is effective learning by the student whatever it is effective learning or effective teaching we have certain attributes test mark analysis analysis research analysis attendance of the student discipline in the classroom effective delivery of the content encouraging student to ask questions answering to the students questions giving feedback on students performance preparing and circulating the course material helping the soul learners so these are all we are doing for promoting better learning and also to effectively deliver the lecture but what is missing what the, we we require more focus on the parameter so what is the inference what we infer from all the analysis and how the inference is used for better learning for promoting students effective learning that is what we have to think and we have to implement in our day to day classroom activity so if you look at the quality of education or quality of student learning there are three parameters curriculum design so curriculum it gives what to teach and pedagogy pedagogy it gives how to teach and assessment and the feedback so how to assess and how to feed, give the feedback so the feedback will motivate the student for further learning so these three are important for quality of education or quality of the student learning so the curriculum should be dynamic on par with the industrial and societal requirement uh, but in an affiliated institution this is not possible it is not in our hand curriculum design is not in our hand we are following the anna university syllabus or any university syllabus but we have the freedom of adding the courses value added courses or freedom of adding the new courses to improve the skill of the student and pedagogy we require some change we require some change and innovative and the active method of teaching inside the classroom then only the student will be on par with the industrial requirement and assessment and feedback we have to balance lot and hots lot is lower order thinking skill so in the bloom's taxonomy remember understand apply first three they are lots and the second three analyze evaluate and create they are hots higher order thinking skills so we have to balance we have to promote more hots and we have to give emphasis on the lots also so feedback should be encouraging the student to learn so we have to give feedback on every session every classroom every lecture so that the student will be encouraged for better learning in future 
So the assessment drives student learning. The statement made by John E. Miller. They are the researcher on educational technology. And assessment drives what students pay attention to and define the actual curriculum. So Ramshan in 1992. And one more important statement. Curriculum instruct the teachers what to teach and exam instruct the students what to learn. So Donald Melnick in 1991. These are all the contributors for educational technology. Uh, they focus on how to, uh, uh, they, they give a lot of tips for the pedagogy of teaching and assessment and feedback system. So three dim dimensions of the quality educational system. So we require the input of the system, what happens in the system and output of the system. So the input of the system, the resources, uh, what is available in the campus in terms of faculty, in terms of building, uh, in terms of lab facility and the finance, financial status of the institution and what kind of infrastructure available in the institution. These are all the input to the system, educational system. What happens in the system? The process used to organize and control the entire process. We have different processes in the uh, educational system, uh, what, how we organize the process and how we control the process. So we, should, we need to develop, develop the process, uh, organize the process and control the process and process used to deliver the education. So teaching learning process, how we effectively we are designing the teaching learning process and uh, controlling or implementing the teaching learning process. That is what happening inside the system. And based on the uh, first two, we have output, the product of education, the quality of education, the quality of the graduates, quality of the engineer uh, coming out of the institution and the result of education. So it may be result of education or the quality of the product of education. So these are all the three important dimensions of quality educational system. And uh, who is a good engineer? So if you, if you ask the question 10, 20 years back, technical capability. If a person coming out of engineering college, if he has got the subject knowledge, very good subject knowledge, is, is referred as a good engineer and immediately he will fetch a job. He will get a job in a, a higher level with a higher salary. But today with the industry 4.0, the focus is something different. In addition to the technical capability, in addition to the knowledge on the subject, the industry or the employer uh, they are expecting some more skill from the student. So the skills are problem solving skill, teamwork, critical thinking, leadership skill, lifelong learning, ethical behavior and social responsibility. So in addition to the technical capability or subject knowledge, the student, the engineering graduate or engineer coming out of the college should have all the qualities. Then only he will find a job in the job market. So the everything, all the parameters or all the attributes, they are included in the form of program outcomes. So the program outcomes, there are 12 program outcomes. They are engineering knowledge, problem analysis, design development of solutions, conduct, conduct investigation of complex problems, modern tool usage, the engineer and the society, environment and sustainability, ethics, individual and teamwork, communication, project management and finance, lifelong learning. These are all the 12 program outcomes. So when we impart the knowledge of the 12 program outcomes, if the student exhibit the talent on the 12 program outcomes, they will be quality engineer after four years of graduation and they will be very much suitable for the industrial requirement today. And here the 12 outcomes, the first five, they are called as technical outcomes. So the, the technical outcome we can directly import in the classroom through the theory subject or the practical subject. And the other outcome, the 6 to 12, they are called as professional outcomes. They are required. We have to give more emphasis on the professional outcome in addition to the subjects. So the professional outcome we can we can we can we can impart to the student only through actively involving the student in various activities. And another way of classifying, looking at the program outcome, the program PO1, engineering knowledge is knowledge oriented and PO234, problem analysis, it, is, it promotes the problem solving skill and PO5, PO9, PO10 and PO11, they are the skill oriented group and PO6, PO7, PO8 and PO12, they are attitude oriented group. 
So this is another way of looking at the program outcome. So whatever it is, we have to at the end of the, if you look at the program outcome, at the end of four years, the graduate will be able to satisfy, should be familiar with or exhibit the talent on the 12 program outcomes. Then only he will be a successful engineer. And through the subject over the four years, through our teaching over the four years, how we can transfer the knowledge of the 12 POs to the students. That is the challenge with the teachers now. And when, when in any department, any program, be mechanical, be triple or ECE, we have vision, mission statement, we have program outcome defined by NBA and we have program specific outcome drafted in our own department. And for every course, we have the course outcome and every lecture, we have the lecture outcome. So the teacher, uh, the last two course outcome and the lecture outcome, it is a responsibility of the individual teacher. So the individual teacher, they have to write the course outcome and for every lecture, there will be 45 lectures per course or 60 lectures per course. For every lecture, we have to write the lecture outcome. So in the design, when we write the statement, in the design, it is the top-down approach. So starting from vision to the lecture outcome. First, we write the vision statement, mission statement, then we write the program specific outcome, then we draw the, uh, write the course outcome, then we write the lecture outcome but in the case of assessment it is bottom up approach first we can measure directly measure what is happening inside the lecture classroom so we measure only the lecture outcome so based on the lecture outcome we can connect we can correlate with the course outcome then we correlate the course outcome with the program outcome or program specific outcome then we look at the based on the achievement of po and the pso we can look at our mission we can connect with our mission and uh, if required, we can go back to change our mission of the department. And the assessment strategy for outcome-based education. So there are three uh, strategies. First, mapping of program outcome with the assessment. So course outcome we are assessing, but how to connect the program outcome with the assessment or the examination. And here to map the program outcome for the to the assessment, we have we require two step process for bringing clarity of the PO. So we have to have more clarity on the PO. Then only we can connect the PO with the assessment or the examination. The program outcomes we define the two parameters. One is competency and performance indicator. So the Program mapping, first parameter, mapping program outcome to the assessment or examination. So the program outcome, 12 program outcome, what we use in our uh, system, they are taken from graduate attributes uh, GA. So graduate attributes articulate the generic ability of to be looked for in a graduate of any undergraduate degree program. Then the program outcome reflect the skill, knowledge and ability of the graduate regardless of the field of study. He may be studying any branch of engineering, but what is the skill, knowledge and ability of the student on completion of the program, on completion of any particular branch of study. That is what focusing the program outcome is emphasis. Out, in outcome based education, the design down process employed which moves from PO to course outcome, that is COs and the outcome of the individual learning experiences. So there is lecture outcome or the learning outcome. So this is what design down approach and uh, teaching strategies, learning activities, assessment and resources should be all should be designed and organized to help the student to achieve the learning outcome at the course level. So assessment is only possible at the course level and the lecture level and we have to connect the assessment the outcome or result of the assessment to the program outcome. That is what the mapping of PO with the assessment or the examination. And uh, for any class, for any classroom lecturing, and the triangle of effective learning is very important. So there are three important, three element. One is learning outcome. For any class we design, we prepare the notes. And uh, before delivery of the notes, we have to think what is the learning outcome for that particular class? Then we have to, to achieve the learning outcome, we have to design the learning activity, we have to design our teaching 
and incorporate the learning activity so that learning outcome will be achieved. Then we have to orient, we have to pre effective, prepare, effectively prepare the notes and uh, implement the activity uh, in the teaching learning inside the classroom. And uh, at the end of the class, we have to assess the effectiveness, assess the learning outcome and uh, we, based on the output, based on the assessment, we have to give the feedback to the student so that they will learn better in the next class. So the three triangle, three component of the uh, effective triangle of effective learning, we are, it should be aligned properly uh, on par with the, the Bloom's taxonomy, cognitive uh, cognitive uh, of cognitive uh, parameter of the Bloom's taxonomy. The two step process. So POs program outcomes they give useful guidance at the program level for curriculum design, delivery and assessment of student learning. PO represents fairly high level generic goals that are not directly measurable. So real observ observability and the measurability of the PO at the course level is very difficult. So to connect high level learning outcome uh, POs with the course content, course outcome and assessment, we need further clarity and the specificity to the program outcome. This can be achieved through following two-step process, identifying competency and the performance indicators, PIs. So the PO, so PO further clearly drafted uh, in terms of competency and the performance indicator. So this is the, we, for every PO, we have to find out, we have to write the competency for every competency, we have to find out the or we have to write the performance indicator. And the PO, they are represented in terms of competency. Competency for each PO, they define different ability implied by program outcomes, program outcome statements that would generally require different assessment measure. So for each, the PO is very generic. Each PO require uh, reflect different abilities implied by the program outcome which should be measured by different assessment method that is what we ought to define the competency then performance indicators the performance indicator are explicit statements of expectation of the students learning so what is expected from the student student learning which act as a measuring tool in assessment to as understand the extent of attainment of the outcome that is what the performance indicator so the competency, if the PO is, is further defined, very much defined in, in terms of competency. For each competency, we have to identify the assessment method or uh, uh, the measure, uh, measurement method. The measurement method or measuring tool is called as performance indicator. So this is how the assessment PO is connected with the assessment technique. So we have one program outcome and for a particular program outcome, we have different levels of competency, competency 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So 1.1, first, maybe first PO, first competency, first PO, second competency, first PO and third competency. For the competency one, we have performance indicator. So 1.1.1. .1 so first one stands for PO one, second one stands for competency one and third one stands for PI1, performance indicator 1. Similarly, 1.1.2 and 1.1.3. And uh, through the examination or uh, the various assessment technique, we measure only the PIs, performance indicator. Then the performance indicator, they are connected with the PO. So we, we measure only performance indicator uh, through the examination and the result of the performance indicator is connected with the program outcome. Uh, this is how we are connecting the POs with the assessment technique or examination method. And the uh, program outcome competence and performance indicator. So we take only, I, I will take, I will ex explain only one example, PO1. Uh, the other PO for PO1 to PO12, it is very much available in the exam reformation booklet uh, uh, supplied or uh, published by the AACTE. Uh, you can refer to it and uh, you can understand. So this is for mechanical engineering. So uh, uh, the competency and performance indicator, they are for mechanical engineering. The PO, the general PO1, 
uh, engineering knowledge, apply the knowledge of mathematics, science, engineering fundamentals, and an engineering specialization for the solution of complex engineering problem. So, engineering fundamental, the fundamental subjects required for mechanical engineering, for example, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, engineering specialization, uh, for example, machine design one, machine design two, uh, heat and mass transfer, uh, the other production technology subjects, they are the engineering specialization or core subjects. Now, the for PO1, the competency, there are four competency uh, for PO1. First competency, demonstrate competence in mathematical modeling. Then demonstrate competence in the basic sciences. Demonstrate competence in engineering fundamental. And demonstrate competence in the specialized knowledge, engineering knowledge to the program. So the student, they have to demonstrate the competence in mathematical modeling. The student, they have to demonstrate the competence in basic sciences. When the student, they have to demonstrate, we have to design our lecturing style based on the requirement. So, at the end of the lecture, the student will demonstrate the mathematical modeling. So, what are the performance indicator? 1.1.1. Apply mathematical techniques such as calculus, linear algebra or statics to solve the problem. So, the, you can modify the statement based on the subject available to your uh, syllabus. Then 1.1.2. Next level. Apply advanced mathematical techniques to model and solve mechanical engineering problem. So, what are the advanced mathematical techniques used specifically used in mechanical engineering subject? The mechanics that is what in the second performance indicator. Similarly, 1.2, 1.2.1 apply laws of natural science to, to the engineering problem. So, suppose there is a physics subject, test on the physics subject, the question paper will reflect on 1.2.1. If there is a mathematics on the first semester, the question paper will reflect on 1.1.1. And the higher some mathematics question at the higher semester, it is on 1.1.2. The demonstrate competence in engineering fundamental and performance indicator is 1.3.1. Apply fundamental engineering concept to solve engineering problem. Suppose there is a question on engineering thermodynamics or engineering mechanics or fluid mechanics. So, it will be reflecting on the 1.3.1. And 1.4.1, uh, apply mechanical engineering concept to solve engineering problem. So, there is a question on higher subject. For example, manufacture technology 1 or production planning control or heat and mass transfer machine design 1 or machine design 2 that will reflect on 1.4.1. So, this is how we design the PO competency for each PO and performance indicator. So, remember it is available in the examination reform book published by AACTE with slight modification we can adopt to it for all the branches we can adopt to it and in the first PO on the first five PO there is one statement called complex engineering problem so the student will be able to address solve or design complex engineering problem or investigate complex engineering problem or they will model uh, to complex engineering activity. So, what is the significance? What is the importance of the complex engineering problem? So, what is a complex engineering problem that we have to define? Problem not the kind generally encountered at the end of the textbook chapters. So, there are two types of problem closed problem, closed end problem, open end problem. So, if a problem has distinct or specific answer, they are closed end problem. All the students will get the same answer. Open end problem, so, they will be referring to different, uh, suppose the students are referring to some data book uh, for, uh, for some data or taking equation from the data book or property table, referring to the property table, taking the property, selecting the material. If the student, they are assuming certain things in a particular problem and solving on their own, it varies. The answer will be varying and that is called as open-end problem. So, the open-end problem, they are complex engineering problem closed end problem they are not complex engineering problem so the problem which is available in any textbook they are closed end problem they are not complex engineering problem so we have to design we have to design the complex engineering problem and we have to practice the student to apply or uh, solve the complex engineering problem in their career these are the problems that have not been completely framed and leave at least a few choices to the students to make 
so we ought to make the, the student they ought to make some choice some assumption in solving the problem and they ought to refer uh, in, invite involved some physical law or mathematical law or using some uh, refer refer some standard book asm handbook or ASTM, astm handbook or refrigeration table for solving the problem that is then the problem is called as complex engineering problem and we have the Bloom's taxonomy, revised Bloom's taxonomy, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And the first three they are called as lots, lower order thinking skill, and second three they are called as hots, higher order thinking skills or hots. So the lower order thinking skills, lots can be assessed only by written examination or laboratory assessment. So in our regular curriculum, we are doing the assessment, we are measuring the, we are conducting internal assessment, uh, test end semester examination for theory courses. Similarly, for the laboratory courses, we have continuous assessment and the end semester examination. So that is, that, that is uh, any written examination, it is only for, it, is, it, will be, it will be assessing only the lots, lower order thinking skill. Remember, understand and apply. The assessment of HOTS, higher order, higher order thinking skill, evaluate, analyze, evaluate and create creating so it, it is done by the course project mini project minor project capstone project seminar quiz program presentation made by the student internship and in plant training so that is why the internship is important common that is why ASD making mandatory internship is mandatory for engineering graduate and in plant training so in plant training should be properly evaluated and included in the assessment plan and remember we should not change the question paper without changing the pedagogy of teaching. So without changing the pedagogy or methodology of teaching inside the classroom, we should not uh, set the question paper, prepare the question paper as per the, the AACT document, as per the examination reform policy. So the, the change is required at the pedagogy inside the classroom, then only we can set the question paper uh, for a higher level. And do not assess the hearts without rubrics. So rubrics is a parameter. Uh, which is used for assessing, effective assessing the hearts. So rubrics, uh, the rubrics also given in the examination reform booklet, you can refer to it and use it effectively or you can Google search for rubrics. You can, there are rubric uh, uh, softwares available uh, using the software, we can, you can set your rubrics for your assessment. And this is the course assessment plan. So the, we have normally, we have uh, five to seven uh, course outcome for every subject, every course, and we have to write the statement. The statement should begin with the Bloom's action work, and it should be connected with the POs and PIs, specifically PIs and the Bloom's level. So Bloom's level, starting from uh, remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So this is how we ought to prepare the course outcome. And the course assessment plan again, the assessment method and weightage. So again, for six course outcome, we have IA1, IAT1, internal assessment test one, internal assessment two, test two and test three. And we may conduct quiz program, as in we, can, we may give assignment to the student and we, they, we may ask the student to prepare and present their uh, content in, the, in terms of presentation. But for anionist examination, the first three, the three tests are mandatory. Uh, based on the test only, we are going to calculate the internal assessment mark for the NI University. And uh, this will promote the lower order thinking skill. And uh, the quiz program assignment and the presentation, they will promote the hearts, higher order thinking skills. And remember, assignment is not directly uh, copying some information from the book. That kind of question is not assignment. Assignment should be challenging to the students. It may be a problem or maybe a case study. So they have to apply their mind, refer uh, material and prepare. So directly answering uh, two more questions or the part B question or solving problem from the analyst question paper, they are not assignments. The assignment should be challenging. And the presenting or presentation also, uh, they have to make proper presentation. They have to write a report and they have to make presentation using the PPT. And uh, use rubrics for assessment of assignment and presentation. So then only uh, you can you can effectively uh, promote the higher order thinking skills in the student's mind. And these are all the uh, uh, the six six uh, uh, blooms level: remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. And the first two four, first three normally first three uh, 
to some extent analyzing also you can include in the fixed hour examination that is IA test or the unanimous examination and the last three analyzing evaluating and creating you can very much assess through the course project mini project assignment and the capstone project and the question paper structure so this is how we have to prepare the question paper structure so question paper number question number the question and the mark allotted, the CO, Bloom's level, and finally PI. This is new inclusion. CO, CO1, CO2, CO3, you can mention. Bloom's level, you can mention. And you have to write the uh, perform I mean, per performance indicator connecting the corresponding PO. And this is how the question paper is distributed, the model distribution. Bloom's level 1, 7%. Bloom's level 2, uh, 18%. Bloom's level 3, 68% and uh, Bloom's level 4, 7%. So, analyzing 7% application, 68%. Uh, so, this is actually, and uh, one, one more thumb rule for question of the setting, the first two, Bloom's level 1 and 2, you should not be more than 40%. So, if it is more than 40%, that will promote only the road learning. So, mugging up the information. So, we have to train the students on the higher level, apply analyze so apply majority of the question paper should be on the application side so that will that is the maximum uh, possible higher level uh, which we can measure using the the examination and similarly the distribution in, with respect to po the uh, co co1 19.5 percent co2 40 percent co3 8.1 percent it need not be equal it may vary depending on the co what we are writing for a particular course and the Bloom's level, the distribution of the Bloom's level, uh, you have to remember the first two level, remember and understand should not be, the questions on remember and understand should not be more than 40%. And this is the one model question paper what I uh, prepared for our course. Uh, and this is the, these are all the COs for the subject. It is hidden mass transfer. And these are all the question paper. 1.3.1 is apply fundamental engineering concept to solve engineering problem. And 1.4.1 is apply mechanical engineering concepts uh, to solve the engineering problem. So here, what is Fourier law of heat conduction? So this is fundamental engineering, fundamental. So the basic law. And here, assuming sun as a black body, which is the question where we are, they have to apply the concept of mechanical engineering to solve the problem. And similarly, 2.1.3, identify mathematical engineering, uh, mathematical engineering and other relevant knowledge that will apply so we have to apply uh, for for the derivation they have to apply the engineering and mathematical knowledge to derive the equation and 2.2.3 it is again solving the problem uh, using the engineering and mathematical skill that is what the 2.2.3 similarly other questions question number 12 question number 13 question number 14 and question number 15 and similarly, the part C question, 2.2.3, 2.2.1. So, if you look at the question, theory question, the PI performance indicator, 2.2.3, 1.1.1, 2.2.3, or 1.3.1. So, there are only four PIs addressed through the theory question paper. When you look at other question paper, for example, if you look at the laboratory question paper, so you can, you can have, you can address more PO and PI. And if you look at the mini project, you can you can uh, involve all the almost all the POs in the mini project or the major project. So the assessment is for a written examination, the PO attainment of PO or assessment of PO is limited. Whereas in the other level, presentation, quiz project or caption project, uh, assignment, everything. So in all the th things we can. We can promote, we can, we can import the knowledge of higher order thinking skill as well as the PO 6 to PO 12 to the student. And I published, I uh, prepared a YouTube video on all the subjects mentioned here. And you can refer to the YouTube channel, YouTube videos, and you can have a better idea about various, uh, various, uh, various, uh, various things on the outcome based education. For example, active learning technique teaching and learning of generation Z students, Bloom's taxonomy in lecture, design, delivery and assessment of lecture, engaging adult learners, program based learning activity one, activity two, stayed a case study, active learning using case study. So all these videos are available. You, you refer to the video and you have some idea on the topics given here. And finally, to close, 
if you are if you do ordinary things with absolute involvement you will become an extraordinary person so the, the the every lecture we have to focus every lecture class we have to focus we have to design the lecture properly and with consciously we have to implement we have to deliver the lecture and assess the lecture outcome and we have to give the feedback to the student so it is it is doing the basic activity classroom activity effectively so when you do it effectively and you will be an extraordinary person for the student so be being a teacher be a wonderful role model because you will be the window through which many children will see their future so this is the statement made by thomas mckinnon so you be a model role model and knowingly unknowingly you are the role model but you be an effective role model so that the student will learn better the mediocre teacher tells the good teacher explains the superior teacher demonstrates the great teacher inspires this is the statement made by william arthur watt so where we are now so you have to think and answer to with to your consciousness so i repeat the statement again the mediocre teacher tells the good teacher explains the superior teacher demonstrates and the great teachers inspires and finally with the closing statement a teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself a lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame so the statement is made by rabindranath tagore who is a great teacher and poet from our country so listen to the statement internalize the statement and you try to reflect the statement in your day to day activity and these are all the books i recommend for your further learning on the subject so all the out of seven books i have mentioned i have given here excepting the teaching learning stem uh, all the other books are available online it is free of cost google search you can google search it and you can find the book you refer to it for uh, strengthening your teaching skill uh, to have a better to, to become a better teacher in future so thank you if you have any queries you contact me i will help you to for all your teaching in your teaching career thank you